Hi, I'm Paul Friedman. I'm the founder of the Marriage Foundation. This topic, ways to improve communication in a marriage. I'm very close to this because before I became a marriage helper over 20 years ago, I was a divorce mediator and guess what? It's all about communication. It's all about finding in divorce mediation. It's all about finding common ground. Now, here's where it gets cool. Most psychologists, most traditional marriage counselors do not know what I know because I don't come from a background of therapy, of psychology. I'm not a big fan of Western psychology, to be perfectly honest with you. I think they're great at labeling problems, but I don't think they're good at solving them. And so what I did was I unraveled marriage. I started with the basic core question. Why do people get married in the first place? It isn't to communicate. It's to be happy. So the whole thing is very different. The kinds of communication skills you need in marriage are vastly different from the communication skills you need everywhere else in life. I created some wonderful techniques, for instance, the uh, tabletop technique, which is great. I'll teach it to you right now. You'll use it in other areas of your life, but I don't want you to use it in your marriage. And the way that works is you think of what someone says to you as a dish being served. It's their perspective, their point of view, their communication, and it sits on the top of a table. And people never communicate just one idea. <laughs> We're all way too scattered. So now what you have on your tabletop are a number of dishes. Pick the one that will create the most harmony with your response. And this is the part that you can bring into your marriage. When your spouse is communicating with you, you look for ways to create harmony. Why? Because you got married in order to be happy. So did your spouse. So your job as a married spouse, as the partner, is to always look for ways to infuse your marriage with love. You got married because you fell in love and happiness. Keep that in mind. Those become the pole stars for you when you are communicating. You don't have to react. It is a typical tendency for people that as soon as they hear something, they believe they have to react. Joe Schmo said this, got to react, got to react, but you don't. Not saying anything or smiling is fine. Now, being a jerk and giving rolling eyes or, you know, looking the other way or a snarl, that's a reaction. So communication is not just what you say, but it's your facial expressions, it's your body language, all of that is communication. Now, I go into this in some depth in both of my books, and I also go into it in depth in the courses, which is we have them separated, one for men and one for women, but the courses go further. Now, when I was doing this live on the ground, and people would come to me. First, they would call. Almost 100% of the time, they would tell me they're having communication problems. Well, sure, if things aren't functioning properly in the marriage, your communication isn't going to be positive. It isn't going to be good. So really, although the topic here is ways to improve communication in a marriage, and we could go into that. It's, there's too much to do in one video. There is a key element. And if you understand this key element 
And if you own it and you run with this, then not only will the communication in your marriage improve, but everything about your marriage will improve. And what is that key element? That key element, and I'm going to go further with this than just telling you because there's a, everything, there's a lot to it because everything we know about marriage from society is kind of a mess. The key element is love. And I'm not being corny, but everything has to do with where you're coming from. You see? So if you're in a communication scenario in a venue that is combative and you say something that is loving well that's transparent the person you're communicating with won't trust you nor should they so where you're coming from with your husband or your wife needs to be from your heart you cannot just fix the outer stuff. You cannot just correct yourself when you're about to say something mean, sarcastic, or in other ways not loving into loving. You have to change yourself. If you want to have a great marriage, and marriage is intended to be great, think of it this way. If you get a really great car, and you get inside that car, and because it's an expensive car, and you turn on the radio, it's got a great sound system, but if you never learned how to drive that car, which is the real reason why you get a car, you're not gonna have any fun with it. We don't know why we get married. Marriage has to be learned, and you get married for happiness and love. And it's designed, just like that car is designed to travel the road safely and smoothly to get you to your destination, marriage is designed for smooth operating that produces love and happiness. So going back to communication, when you're communicating with your spouse, it's not enough to know all these different techniques of communication. It's more important to learn how to master your mind so that it's not preventing you from going into your heart and coming from a place of heart. You see, we have different levels of consciousness, don't we? We know this, I'm just going to put it out there so it becomes a reality for you and not just, oh yeah, that makes sense. We have a body. We're not the body, but we have one. The body is comprised of trillions of cells. Each one of those cells is driven by the drive to survive, self-preservation. That's all your cells know, they're intelligent, they can't think, but they're intelligent and they're constantly pinging your mind, reminding your mind because you have a mind. It's a possession. You're not your mind. Hey, be careful. Watch out. Look out for that opportunity. Look out for that danger. And so what happens is if we're, and none of us are, but if we're just purely in the primal, which is the drive to survive, which is self-preservation, well, we'd be a psychopath, but we're, that's one level and it mixes with the other two levels. There's three levels. The top level is the level of love, the consciousness of love. You, the soul, if you didn't have a body, you still have a mind, but you have no body constantly pinging your mind to survive, then you would live in what you would call bliss consciousness the highest state of love and joy, because that's the nature of the soul. It's created in God's image, not fingers and toes, but consciousness in between. So that state, that's why you got married, to experience that state, and your marriage should be driven as much as possible from that state. 
when you are in that state of consciousness, when you're seeing your spouse, when you're thinking of your spouse, when you're with your spouse, what comes out from your mouth, what is communicated from your body, your smile, your eyes, everything will be love, joy. And it becomes reciprocal, it gets very nice. So we as human beings, get caught in the mind. We become identified with the mind. The mind is just a machine. It doesn't have a consciousness. It's just a machine. But what happens is we have this drive to survive. We have this holy, blissful state of consciousness and it translates into, oh, what am I gonna do today? And the mind is telling you what to do out of habit. And so that's called the mundane state of consciousness. And that's unfortunately what happens to 99% of the marriages because no one has learned how to number one, master the mind and number two, because you gotta master the mind or you can't feel that joy from within. And number two, learn about marriage. So you understand the car that you're driving in so in our books, we don't go into that, but in the courses, we do go into that. It's a two-pronged thing where you're taught how to master your mind. You have to learn how to master your mind to be in joy. And the second prong is to learn all about marriage. And that's how you achieve communication that will improve your marriage but it won't just make your marriage a little better. And this is what is so beautiful. This is why I shifted my career entirely because I discovered something that no one talks about. To put it succinctly, what is marriage? Oh, I don't know. Right. We're not taught even what marriage is. We just get married. But I had to know if I'm going to help a couple, because that's what happened. A couple said, you know, we don't really want to get a divorce. We want to, can you help us? You're a great communicator. Can you help us get through this? Da, da, da. I studied marriage. I couldn't go to the world of psychotherapy to learn about marriage because they don't know nothing. I literally had to reinvent the wheel. And I realized, what is marriage? Marriage is a spiritual path. Don't don't end the video now, hear me out, because love is spiritual. Love is not material, so it's spiritual. It's that simple. It's a spiritual path, meaning we get on that path individually. It's an individual path, a spiritual path to achieve love and joy, but we do it with our soulmate. It's so beautiful. What does that translate into at the end of the day? It translates into two people living in such joy that they don't even care what's going on in the world. Don't even care. Well, of course, a little bit, we don't wanna see anyone suffer and we watch and all that, but we don't really care because we're into nurturing, cultivating the love and the joy that we find in marriage and it's endless. Love has no boundaries. We talk about infinity, the mind cannot comprehend. You never notice how your mind can't comprehend infinity because it's just a machine. You have to learn how to master the mind. But you, the soul, you, the soul, are infinity itself. You're infinite love, infinite joy. And when you do that with somebody and they don't have to be like into it the way you're into it, you could do it individually and it will still work. It's like building a bridge. People talk about building a bridge for a greater connection. Well, it only takes one person to build that bridge. You both meet on it. It still works. So what about communication that improves marriage is not about learning more skills in communication, it's about learning how to come from your heart, your soul, from you. And that's it. You're probably a subscriber already. You should become one. We're over, I think we're getting close to 35,000 subscribers now. 
and we get such wonderful comments. You could leave a comment. We get lots of likes and it's fascinating. We don't get dislikes. Once in a while, there's someone who's offended because we don't condemn anybody at the Marriage Foundation. We don't blame the spouse for what they did. We understand it, but it's all about positive evolution, individual evolution. Speaking of which, we're gonna start training TMF counselors because we need TMF counselors. So if you're interested, let us know and we will let you know when we're ready for that or it might be on the website already. In any case, my name is Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. I am very glad that you stopped by. I'd love for you to continue to watch these videos so you can learn how to be married. Get the most out of it. Why not? Why not? Don't settle for an okay marriage. Don't definitely don't settle for a crap -o marriage. Have an amazing marriage. You got the Ferrari. That's what your marriage is. Learn how to drive it. All right. Thank you and God bless you. Take care.